In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a 3D relief by using the two rail sweep and the shape editor tools within ArtCam Insignia. As you can see, I've opened up my maple leaf drawing and on the screen at the moment is a leaf image and there are also quite a few vectors on there which have already been generated for you. As you can see we have the outline of the maple leaf and we also have a few extra vectors. These are what are going to be used for the two rail sweep. Now the two rail sweep tool it can create some quite complex reliefs so what we're going to be doing is basically just a introduction into the two rail sweep. So what I'm going to do is go to the 3D view first of all by selecting up here. You can also press F3 on the keyboard and I'm going to select this button here for the colour shade. What this does, it places the image within the 3D view. And I'm also going to click here to toggle the vector visibility. So this will show the vectors within the 3D view. If you want to rotate this around, just select the middle mouse button, hold it down and then just drag the mouse. It will dynamically rotate the sheet. If you want to zoom in on particular areas, just move the mouse to that area and then use the scroller to zoom in or out of that particular area. So we're going to open up the two rail sweep which is located here and you can see this dialog box that opens up. What we're going to do is specify some drive rails so basically these are the paths that the cross sections are going to take when it's extruded. So we're basically going to extrude some vectors along some rails. So if I select this far left vector and I'm going to select that as the top drive rail. Now you notice that an A gets put onto the end of that to specify that it's drive rail A and you'll also notice these arrows so these are specifying which direction this is going in. Now this is quite important if we had two rails and one was going in the opposite direction it would create a twisted relief. So if I select the far right one and select this as the bottom drive rail. Now here you can see it's got B at the top and it's going in the same direction. If these weren't going in the same direction what I could do is just reverse the direction by selecting here for instance for the second one. You can also add a Z control vector so it modulates along the Z plane. I'm not going to do this for this demonstration. What I'm going to do is just add some cross sections. So we're going to add this large curvy vector and click add cross section. Now you notice that that's changed to 1 and we have a cross section 1 here now. I'm going to do the same for this smaller cross section and add that. So that's now cross section 2. So we have 1 and 2 for these two cross sections. And you'll also notice that on the drive rails we have numbers. So we have 1 and then 2. So this is showing you from the start it's going to be the larger vector and then it's going to slowly blend into the smaller vector at the end which is number 2. Now make sure that we've got the combine mode set to add so it's just going to add material onto the zero plane and then click calculate. Now if I close the two rail sweep and go back to the material just toggle off the vectors for the time being you can see that that's extruded both of those cross sections through the drive rails and it's given us this quite unique relief. So if I turn the vectors back on for a moment, make sure nothing's selected by just selecting in the yellow area and I'm going to select the outside of the leaf. Now what we're going to do is basically get rid of all of the outside portion of the relief from the outside of this vector. 
So the way that we can do that is to open up the shape editor which is located there. Now the shape editor is a basic relief creation tool. You can create flats, beveled edges and domes with this. And it also acts as a cutting or a trim tool. So if I were to select zero rest you can see that it's trimmed and deleted all of the outside portion of the relief that was outside of my selected vector. Now what I'm going to do is to create this small stem here just to add on to the leaf. I'm going to create a dome with an angle of 45 degrees and a start height of 3.5 so it's actually adding a flat of 3.5 and then creating the 45 degree dome. Now I need to make sure that I click merge high for this because I want it to blend in nicely to the leaf. If I were to click add it would just add on top of any area that it's overlapping. So I need to make sure that I select merge high. Now I can turn off all of my vectors and you can see that that's given me quite a nice looking leaf. Now what we need to do is make it a little bit more realistic by adding a texture to this. Now the way that we can do that is to use the texture relief tool. And what this does you can create spherical textures, elliptical, cones, pyramid, weaves and you can also do this from a file. So I'm going to click selected vector, make sure that it's the selected vector as we only want the texture to be inside the leaf vector here. So I'm going to select that. I can toggle off the vectors, it's still selected as long as I don't click anywhere else on the screen. And I'm going to click file and I'm going to choose my maple leaf image which is just a JPEG. I'm going to click open. Now, here you can see in blue gives me a preview of this image. I'm not going to change the width, the height or the Z height of this. I'm just going to click add and then I can close the texture relief. And there you can see that that's given me quite a nice bit of detail on the leaf. So this is ready to be machined now and sent to my CNC. So the way that I do that is to select toolpaths from the project tree which opens up all of the toolpaths on the bottom right hand side. I'm going to create a machine relief toolpath that opens up a new dialog box. I'm going to do the whole of the relief. For the finishing options I'm going to choose the smallest ball nose cutter that I have which is a 1.5mm ball nose cutter and click select. The tool clearance strategy is going to be raster so basically it's going to come across in X, step over in Y and then come back across in X and then keep on doing this. The angle is going to be 0, tolerance 0 0.01 and the allowance 0. Roughing options I'm going to choose a 12mm end mill and I'm going to select here to show the parameters of that end mill. So I can select anywhere on this bar which will open up the parameters. And I'm going to change the step down to 3 millimeters. Again, the clearance strategy is going to be raster, tolerance 0.04, the allowance which is the material to leave on for finishing is 0.5 and make sure that the safe Z and home Z are set to 10. Material thickness, just set that up. I'm going to set that at 7 and the material Z0 at the top, the model position in material is at the top also. So I'll OK that, that creates the material block for me and then I can click calculate now. So this is generating the roughing toolpath as you can see there and finally the finishing toolpath. Now we can close the machine relief dialog box by clicking here and if I want to turn off these toolpaths at the moment I can't really see the leaf I'll just click here on the right of toolpaths where the 
light bulbs are and that toggles on and off the toolpaths. If I wish to just turn off a specific toolpath, expand the machine relief and let's just turn on, let's say for instance, the roughing toolpath by clicking that particular light bulb and that will just show the roughing toolpath. So I'll turn all of those off and close the machine relief tree. And what we're going to do now is to simulate this so it gives a representation of what's going to be sent to my machine. So if I right click on machine relief and then select simulate toolpath. Here you can see it's given me a simulation of what's actually going to be machined. Now you can see that the simulation has been done in a dark wood. I want this to be a lighter wood so what I'm going to do is click simulation and below the splitter bar here where it says material you can see it's medium oak. I want to change this to light oak so just select there and change it to light oak but make sure that you click apply and then that will apply the material to that. Finally what I'm going to do is to save the toolpaths for my machine. So I can do that by clicking on toolpaths. Again it opens up the toolpath options for me down the bottom right hand side and I'm going to select to save the toolpaths. Now if I wish to do each one of these separately what I need to do is click save toolpaths to separate files and I'm going to save this onto my desktop and there you can see that it's changed to my desktop where it says save in. I'm going to give it a file name as leaf and I'm going to change the machine file format which is the post processor for my machine. Here you can see lots of different machines available to ArtCam. There are well over 200 posts in this list. I'm just going to use a genetic G code for this and then click save and this will save both of the files in separate files onto my desktop ready to be sent to my machine.